Hello everybody, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. In this video, we have an update on the Clayton Eckerd fake paternity hoax scandal. Biggest story in entertainment news. The last couple of days was relatively calm, but now we have an update. It's all about patterns, right? It's about finding patterns when there's potential con artistry going on. And we have Jane Doe using the sheriff to bully a journalist in Florida. I'm going to share the emails that were obtained by journalist Megan Fox, who, of course, we've worked hand in hand with to uncover some wild patterns here in what started as a simple family court paternity case, which is turned into was she ever pregnant and what sort of information has she put out there that has been proven to be false and where Clayton's story is going to go moving forward. I'm going to share with you new emails and things I've never shared because, well, they could have been interesting before. Now you get to see the framework of what Jane Doe is doing, which essentially is convincing a police department, whether it be Maricopa County police, uh, sheriffs in Florida, and in my case, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, that's right, the FBI in Los Angeles, California. The similarities she uses to try and silence others are worth taking note of. We will have all of that in this video. Another thing I'll be sharing right after this on Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Neal are several updates not yet ready for public consumption, that being a discussion on Clayton's upcoming deposition. Now, we know Jane Doe dodged her deposition for fear it would be embarrassing for the public to see what she has to say. Clayton, not worried at all about that, will be attending his, bravely, might I add. I'll have information on that, some movings and goings after talking to documentarians about what they want to do with this story, which they have every right to do whatever the hell they want, but that ball is moving actually faster than previously noted, and also a couple other you know topics regarding sources coming through with their own evidence, both uh, hard copy and anecdotal. We'll have all of that and more on Patreon, but first, follow me on Instagram at DNeals. Don't forget, the best way to support is to join us on the podcast. It's free every morning and afternoon, Bachelor Rush Hour, do a Vanderpump Rules update in every waking move of Taylor Swift. All of that and more over there, but let's get into it. So Megan Fox had emailed to receive copies of what the hell went down with an email thread between Liz Neptune, a content creator in Florida, and Jane Doe, um, a podcaster, I guess you call her, in Arizona. I don't know what you want to call her. Uh, she's a nuisance, if you ask me. That's my opinion. I think I'm allowed to state it. Uh, no more than a nuisance, though. We're doing just fine. But uh, sadly, she did want to weaponize my own private, uh, you know, ongoings with my family, which have no real reason to be talked about in this case. You know, we're talking about this case she brought publicly, and yet she wants to take my private information and air it out, which, again, I don't really have a big problem with that. I'm a stand-up comedian. What I say on stage and what I talk about, I can own up to. But at the same time, it just shows her hypocrisy. And any sort of move she'll make to, uh, I guess, win both public opinion and court opinion. So anyway, here's an email. Hi, Megan. I was out of town last week. Here's the documents, basically. And this is from the Broward County uh, Public Information Officer to Megan Fox, who has you know, shared this publicly available information here. And here's uh, what it says from Lacey. Um, this, okay, so this is 31 pages. I'm going to kind of breeze through it. They are emails between Jane Doe in the sheriff's department and then the sheriff's department with Liz Neptune. So essentially, Jane Doe didn't like what Liz Neptune was up to and decided to find a way to uh, contact the sheriffs and find the local authorities that could deal with her. So a lot of long distance calling happening here. So what we have here is a response to Jane Doe from the sheriff. I acknowledge the distressing incidents of criminal harassment, defamation, and unauthorized disclosure of private communications 
that you have been subjected to by an individual identified as Liz Neptune. It is crucial to address these issues promptly and effectively. In light of the ongoing cyberbullying and harassment, I strongly advise you to make an official police report with a law, local law enforcement. Documenting these incidents through an official report is essential in ensuring that the appropriate legal action is taken to protect your rights and hold the perpetrator accountable for their actions. So the biggest question Megan Fox was having, and you can go watch her full video, which I have right here. The biggest question Megan Fox was having was how, how dare the sheriffs take one side's words on something? Well, it's actually more common than you think because I'm going to show how the FBI also took one side's words on something, which again, wouldn't be the end of the world, but then what happens is Jane Doe will then use that information. See, the sheriff's department thinks this is bad. You should, the sheriff's department thinks this is defamation. The FBI thinks this is vexing and that Dave's a bully or whatever. All these things she then takes as half truths from information only she shared and these overworked sheriffs and FBI department just trying to respond and do their civic duty get sucked into this mess. Here's the initial piece of content that ended up, I guess, getting Jane Doe to call the sheriffs as read by Megan Fox. Here's the thing that she wanted to get the have the police do something about. Uh, this was a post she made on Reddit that Liz must have made on Reddit that said she has contacted the Broward County Sheriff's Office to uh, inquire about filing a restraining order against me for harassment. I will be going live um, on my YouTube channel to discuss. And then she posted, Liz posted the, um, the email she received from the Lieutenant literally calls the police to get someone to remove a Reddit post. So ridiculous. Same, same email, same email. So I'll, we'll go back. So yeah, so obviously Megan Fox here sees how ridiculous this is. And you take that email and then you have, uh, their response to uh, the sheriff's department from Jane Doe. This is so tremendously helpful and appreciated. Would it be possible for you to send your message to her in the meantime? I do plan... Okay, so to the naked eye, a random person might say, oh yeah, you, you want me to sh share this message with her? What Jane Doe is doing here is bullying, intimidating, threatening, and weaponizing the sheriff's department. Hey, what you just said to me, will you tell her that? Will you let her know that I've got you on my side because I know how to manipulate the sheriff's department? She said, I do plan to take additional steps you suggested as well. Well, how come you haven't? How come you haven't tried to get a restraining order against her? By the way, it's important to note, um, just for the, the cultural conversation here, Liz Neptune is a um, black content creator. And the fact that Jane Doe, a wealthy white woman in Arizona, would call the sheriff's department on somebody that she, you know, has a disagreement with is very scary. Jane Doe has used uh, several other, other instances, in my opinion, when we're talking about Chase J. Jones, where she's weaponized other social causes, be it the Me Too movement. In this case, she's weaponizing, and I don't know what her gameplay is here of, of uh, getting Liz Neptune involved, but it can be dangerous. It's, it's okay. It's one thing if the cops get called on me, okay? It's another knowing uh, the systemic issues we have with racism in our country. What might go down if the cops are called on a black person, especially in a case where that person hasn't done anything wrong. This is super damaging and it's, it's quite frankly, playing with fire. It's playing with fire. So she continues, here's her email. I'd be so grateful if you could reach out to ask her to remove what she has posted on Reddit, the leaked emails, but understand if you can as well. Thank you again, all the best. So she curries favor with these people as the victim here and lets them believe that they're helping her. And so it goes on and on. Um, and then, you know, a lot of these are duplicates. Um, she responds, Jane Doe says, I've tried to call the police department who can't help me if I don't have an address for her. I know her full name and I guess that Liz Neptune is an alias. She is in Fort Lauderdale. I have also been trying desperately to get a restraining order, but I've been having trouble with the system. I hope you can do something to prevent her from doing what she is claiming she will do tonight. Fingers crossed. Thank you. So again, 
She uses time as a weapon. Can you help me before she does what she's going to do tonight? What? Have a freaking live stream? Is that you're so afraid she's going to be on her own live stream? What? Sharing, you know, information that makes you not look good? So, you know, it's too bad that the sheriff's department does get involved in this way. Um, uh, and then their responses. I acknowledge the distressing. Okay, this is the same one. Uh, from before, and it goes back and forth of her saying, this is helpful, thank you so much. Um, we tried to call the police. I don't have her address. I mean, is this Jane Doe looking for the address? I mean, she wants to know the address, and and then her Jane's response will go, well, I'm not dangerous, so who cares? Yeah, but you're using that information to say, I know where you live, bitch. I know where you live, and I don't like what you're saying, so I'm going to, you know, uh, you know, file a restraining order. How the hell... Could Jane Doe get it? And I would love it. Try to file a restraining order on her. Go for it. I'd love to see what goes down with that. So here's what gets crazy is this was the sheriff's response to Liz, to um, Jane Doe. I acknowledge the distressing incidents of criminal harassment. So the sheriff says that. I recommend filing a restraining order against Liz Neptune to establish legal boundaries. So the sheriff says the right thing in the, in the sense where they say, look, if you feel like you've been violated in this way or that way, I recommend you take these steps. But that's not what Jane Doe wants. Jane Doe wants the sheriff to send her a message. And Jane Doe does not want these messages to be made public. Um, then Liz Neptune posts something and she goes, hi, Lacey. Liz Neptune posted this. Is there anything that you can do? All the best. The hell's going on here? And again, a lot of copies of Jane telling the sheriff how helpful you've been um, and, and on and on and on. So it's just a lot of the same thing as part of the, uh, the sort of paper trail that we have here. I can totally understand if these emails don't seem like that big of a deal, but they can escalate real quickly. And these types of emails can lead to coercion, control, bullying, manipulating, and, and, and trying to curry favor with other people saying, see, look, I've emailed them. They've said this. I mean, just to show you how she got the FBI involved with me, she's both weaponized the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and she's also, I mean, we'll stop at nothing to share not even half-truths, but quarter-truths to accuse me of revenge porn and all these crazy things. If I wasn't somebody who had a platform and was fighting this, you would think I was a monster, and some people have. So the question is, who, who's really, uh, who really could sue who for defamation here? Here was an email that was sent, I believe, to my lawyer from Jane Doe as a way to, I guess, bully me into say, hey, Government agencies are looking into your client. A formal complaint filed with the Internet Crime Complaint Center has led to investigations by the FBI. Now that's key. Investigations by the FBI into potential federal crimes. Potential. So she's, you know, she's, she's, Real, real good with her words here, including uh, violations of these different codes. They sent local authorities to my home yesterday to obtain more information and were deeply disturbed by Mr. Neal's clear obsession with me. I've also contacted the Los Angeles to Police Department, who is diligently investigating potential violations of penal codes. I have a call today with a detective to discuss this further. Now, she was adamant in sharing with my lawyer not to share these types of emails. Why? Probably because then the public can see the, and, and the public has a right to know this, uh, the sort of word choices she uses. The, there's clearly an investigation. There's potential federal crimes, all of this nonsense. Well, this was two months ago. No one's knocked on my door, but the threats are still there. In the off chance that some other journalist is threatened by her or, or things in a similar way, it's important that this be shared, this blueprint. She says, in addition, despite your messages that the ongoing sharing of private communication on Mr. Neal's monetized YouTube channel without my explicit consent is not illegal. It is. It is a flagrant violation of federal law. This statute explicitly, so she's now law explaining to a lawyer. She's explaining the law to a lawyer now. This stat, and this is why I thank you guys for donating to my GoFundMe because 
I couldn't compete with all of these penal codes. I couldn't do, she would drain my resources so much that I wouldn't be able to make content because I'd be so privately dealing with her. And that's why your donations that have helped with the legal issues, joining the Patreon and all of that, that helps have someone in my corner backing me. Uh, she says, Mr. Neal's dissemination of hearsay in unproven statements not verified in a court of law raises grave concerns regarding potential defamation and invasion of privacy. These actions have damaged my reputation and intruded upon my private affairs, which constitute legal violations beyond ECPA regulations. Do you think she gets off every single time she has it like a, <laughs> like says these terms? Oh, penal codes, ECPA regulations oh hit me in the good spot there i have also sought support from reproductive rights groups regarding mr neal's distasteful comments and even prepared a reel of his most egregious statements for them of course this reel she shared publicly and then deleted when she realized you know she wasn't winning people over by crying without real tears they found his commentary especially that he wouldn't be interested in me if i hadn't had prior abortions deeply disturbing they have shown a willingness to assist me in halting this unwarranted victimization. Neither you nor your client have shown any regard for my rights or respect for my autonomy. So now we have Jane Doe demanding respect for her autonomy. Where was that respect for victim three, two, one, or victim zero? and others that have come forward. Instead, I felt belittled and disregarded, treated as if I lacked the knowledge or agency to defend myself. I would have presumed, and this is this is where, look, you know, I practice the four agreements, so it's not too often I take personal offense to things, but here's where we toe the line. I would have presumed that Mr. Neal, with his impending fatherhood, would prioritize time with his pregnant wife over potentially being a criminal defendant in a federal case, which only underscores his unhealthy fixation on me. Handing this matter over to the authorities is now my best recourse. I trust in law enforcement's ability to command more respect and address this matter effectively. Any further actions taken are solely due to Mr. Neal's decision to persist in disregarding my plea for privacy. Well, she said she trusts law enforcement's ability to command more respect. Let's see what law enforcement has to say about this. And by the way, Jane Doe, if you're listening, get my wife's fucking name out of your fucking mouth. That has nothing to do with your case. That involves blatant misuse of court systems, legal systems, police systems, the Reddit, blatant misuse of... Uh, other people's medical records, sonograms you claim to be yours. Get that shit out of your mouth. So then she responds, my concerns about Mr. Neal have not been overstated, but are rooted in factual evidence. Just like every other complaint I have made, my only desire has been to stop him from obsessively creating deeply personal, false, and misinformed content about me and my reproductive history. Recently, I reached out to the district attorney's office regarding my concerns about Mr. Neal's conduct. It's evident from their response that the district attorney may find his behavior egregious enough to warrant intervention. So she claims the FBI's investigating me. Well, my lawyer contacts the FBI. Hi, Mr. FBI. I just spoke with you. This is the attorney for David Neal. I just wanted to confirm that you are, in fact, investigating this as I find it curious that a director of fraud and corruption would be involved in a civil harassment issue between two public figures and that you did, in fact, make the statement like we all find the podcaster's fixation very odd. This, of course, is the person that my lawyer reached out to, a bureau director in the office of the district attorney, Bureau of Fraud and Corruption Prosecutions. Congratulations, fellow taxpayers. This is what your money's going towards. The response from the FBI. 
Miss Janie Doey sent the email to our LADA portal with the complaint. As in all matters, we make no presumptions on any uninvestigated complaint. We are not investigating the matter, only reviewing the matter for potential referral to a law enforcement agency. Okay, so a complaint came in. Where should this go? Let's. Uh, should we put it here? Should we put it there? As we do with any complainant to our LADA portal, the facts as sent to me are very odd and vexing, but we do not accept them as evidence. That is for a later day. I will your forward your email to the assigned DDA for evaluation. Sincerely, Mr. FBI. A couple typos in there. Hey, we're all human, right, folks? So here's what's interesting. They say all matters, we make no presumptions. And yet they gave Jane Doe Odd and vexing. They gave her words she can then use to weaponize. Now, they didn't do this on purpose. I'm sure in hindsight, they would have said, they wouldn't have said that because why do they need to va you know validate what she claims is the case? They did the same thing uh, you know, in here where they, you know, initially go to Liz Neptune and they say, well, it sounds like she's defaming and harassing you. We acknowledge all of this. So my question is, what what Kool-Aid are the folks here at the FBI and the Sheriff's Department drinking where they just immediately run with someone's complaint? Well, even now to a layman like me, of course, we don't expect people to be lying or gaslighting or things like that. But even the FBI, like they, they expect people's complaints to be of value and to be credible when in fact they're not whatsoever. So she uses these things. She basically does this. She paints a picture of a monster she shows it to the FBI or to the sheriff department and says, what does this look like? And they go, well, it looks like a monster. Case closed. She's a monster. Liz Neptune's a monster. Dave Neal's a monster. Then people acknowledge the evidence as it exists and we actually get to the truths. So when you just see the initial, you go, I must be living in fairy tale land. Why the hell is Dave Neal getting uh, investigated by the FBI? And then you find out he's not. She's just cut and pasting words to use them against other people. It's a dangerous game she's playing. Someone's going to get hurt. And I implore any sources that are out there to contact me or somebody else covering this case. We can keep your identity at bay if you don't want to be public, but please share your stories. These are important. They help piece together the weaponization of somebody who at all costs will do or say what they need to do to be on the right side of whatever sort of victimization brothel they want to live in. I'm going to have more on Patreon. If this makes you feel a certain way, come join me. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal, and we're going to continue talking about this at noon Central Time right after this.